We just had a very inspiring Dhamma sharing, personal life stories and reasons for us coming to the path and how the Dhamma can really transform one's life, especially when it brings us into community and gives us that sense of being held by something so much bigger than any of us can really fathom. And uh, the power of confidence, faith, trust, that when we practice the Dhamma, somehow we'll be supported, we'll be protected in the most unexpected of ways sometimes. You know? And that can even come about through um, things going really wrong in our life, even to the point of tragedy or extreme loss. You know, sometimes that can turn us towards the Dhamma or we hear the Dhamma and we hear about the Four Noble Truths, you know, the universal truths of suffering and the cause of suffering and uh, the fact that there is also a way out that can be practiced by each and every one of us. And when we have had that suffering in our lives, it doesn't necessarily have to be the suffering that other people would recognize as intense. Sometimes it's a sense of a lack of meaning or a, a real sort of existential crisis, which is what I experienced as a teen. Um, you know, why am I here? What is the purpose of all this? Why is there so much suffering? To the point that when I heard the Dhamma, it became immediately relatable for me and something that I really wanted to dedicate my life to, the practice of. And um, it's beautiful that when we can start practicing the Dhamma, we can learn a new response to the suffering that is part and parcel of everybody's life, everybody's mind, body, phenomena, you know, as long as there are these five candors of body, of feeling, of perception, of reactivity, of volition, and consciousness itself, as long as these things are there, which uh, basically comprise our existence, then suffering comes along with it, it's intertwined. And uh, when we really understand this, then we can actually develop a wholesome response of compassion, of metta, of love, realizing we're all in the same situation. And it doesn't make sense to uh, fight. It doesn't make sense to pile on suffering upon suffering. The only reasonable response is compassion and loving kindness. So this is not a... Um, a kind of airy fairy practice, you know, the practice of loving kindness is not just like um, something that we smear on top or we try to overlay on, on top of our suffering, but it's something that actually stems from that very suffering that we experience at any given time. Some of you have already said in the chat that uh, you're feeling, say, a not a tummy, but your response is to be kind. And this is one of the uh, ways of connecting with that suffering without trying to push it away, but then transforming it through our response. So this is where the mind has power and we can create good mental karma in that wholesome response. Mm -hmm. Karma is not just uh, an observable law that we see playing out externally. It's also an internal um, response of the mind. So Ajahn Brahm has this beautiful phrase that meditation is making good mental karma. So it's the way we relate to whatever arises in body or mind. And this is where we can really change, if you like, not only the present moment, but also uh, the future. Because whatever arises in the future is a product of how we're using our minds right now. And of course, it's not always um, linear. You know, we can still experience suffering or things going supposedly wrong. But the more we're able to respond with loving kindness and compassion, the more we're actually, in a sense, turning the dung into mangoes. Yeah, so this is what Jim Brown means by rub, uh, treading in the dog poo under the mango or the apple tree. We have some apple trees here, and I, I don't know if anyone's done that yet, but there is a sewage, uh, what do you call it? Septic tank. I think the septic tank comes out somewhere near those apple trees, actually. So maybe we should keep the apples and <laughs> make some really nice chutney and sell it to the neighbors or put it out for free. I think that's more likely. We don't sell things as monastics. <laughs> Come and get your poo for free. <laughs> so anyway, jokes aside, 
Um, I thought we could do some practice today. I have no idea how it's going to unfold, but perhaps we could bring in a little bit of what we think of as unwanted um, perhaps qualities that we have in our mm, mental makeup, you know, things about ourselves or about others maybe that we don't really like and see if we can learn to um, regard that in a skillful way. So, um, yeah, we'll meditate for about 40 minutes or so and at the end we will have a little bit of sharing. So any comments, questions, uh, feedback at all is very welcome at that time. Good, so let's start by taking that last sip of tea <laughs> or water, whatever you have there. Oh, you're all so obedient. You're drinking your tea. Has anyone got a mug this big? <laughs> yes, Cindy's getting on. <laughs> nice mugs. Great. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, just getting as comfortable as you can be right now. And right now means this moment is unique. So what your body needs might be different from what it needed in previous times. So just really listening in to your body, to your mind, checking in with the energy that's there, however much is available right now. Checking in with the temperature that surrounds you, making sure you're warm enough, but not too hot. The clothes are not too tight. I'm really welcoming yourself into this space, this shared space of community, whether online or in person or both. And also your own space the place, the room that you're seated in right now. Your own silent sanctuary for the next 45 minutes or so. And gently closing your eyes when you're ready to do so. And just coming in contact with your own body, feeling any sensations at the top of the head and just allowing them, receiving them with kindness, with gentleness, with care. as though you're receiving the light and warmth of the sun. It's not too hot, not too cool, but just gently relaxes your body from the top of the head. Illuminating whatever feelings are there right now. Effortlessly. And spreading to the brow, forehead, relaxing any tension in the forehead, the brow. Even if you experience discomfort in the body, relaxing the brow can help to welcome that, to make peace with that. To allow things to be. And just allowing this kind awareness like the light and warmth of the sun to keep on suffusing the body as though your whole face were now lit up by these gentle rays of sunshine. 
Relaxing the muscles around your mouth, your jaw. Illuminating any feelings, any sensations you experience on the face, the whole head, the ears, down to the neck. To your shoulders, soaking through your shoulders, deep inside. Helping to relax any knottedness, any tension in your shoulders. By simply giving it space. Regarding tension, tightness as a friend. Allowing it to be. and offering your care. Soaking up these lovely rays of sunshine through your arms, down to your hands, your fingers, your fingertips. through your chest so that your whole torso from the chest down to your belly and down your back your whole torso your whole upper body is soaked through with kindfulness, like the light and the warmth of the sun. Deeply relaxing any tightness, tension, anxiety, whatever you're holding in your body right now. Allowing it to be felt and cared for. Allowing tensions to unwind and relax. And spreading down into the buttocks, around the hips, and down the thighs. Just noticing, receiving any sensations in your buttocks, your thighs, and allowing them to be relating to them as a friend with kindly eyes Noticing your knees and any sensations in your knees right now. Some sensations are simply caused by sitting, maybe a little bit of tightness or tension. Others are 
nothing too harmful. And simply by softening into those feelings, they can relax. But just notice if there is any tightness or pressure on your knees that could cause injury or undue strain. And give yourself the opportunity to just adjust your knees out of kindness and care. if necessary right now. And spreading this lovely awareness, kindness, and mindfulness through your shins, calves, ankles, to your feet. The bridge, the sole, the toes, all the way to the tips of the toes. So that your whole body from the top of the head through the trunk, down the arms, down the legs to the toes is soaked through with mindfulness and kindness as though you're simply basking in the warmth of the sun. Sensing the whole body sitting or lying, resting on a chair. And just noticing if there's any area that you're still holding unnecessary tension. And just see if you can gently expand your awareness around that area inviting it to relax as though you're sitting on a deck chair or lying in a pool of warm water totally held supported nothing to do but soak up the gentle rays of sunshine Now I'd like to invite you to bring up to your mind anybody who you have a very instinctive, natural feeling of love towards. The kind of love that's very simple, very pure. Perhaps combined with a feeling of gratitude. Maybe a person who you feel really safe with, really seen.
It could be a dear friend or a nephew, a niece, a sister, a parent, even a teacher. It doesn't have to be one of your closest friends, it can be just a person who you enjoy being around. And who, when you recollect them, brings a smile to your heart, a sense of well-being and ease to your body. And just imagine this person, perhaps, in front of you or sitting by your side. And connect to some quality that you really appreciate in them. To bring more loving kindness up in your heart. And just allow the loving kindness to flow. Connecting to your good wishes for them. Perhaps using words if that's helpful for you or perhaps simply imagining them also basking in the golden light of the sun, relax that he is happy and well. Staying connected to any feelings in your body that are fairly pleasant or neutral. Perhaps if it's comfortable for you. Just noticing the feelings around your chest as you bring this person to mind and wish them well in your own way. If you are using phrases, you can wish this person whatever you think they would want for themselves. Phrases such as, may you be happy. May you be safe. May you be healthy. May you be at peace. And just listening to the resonance of each phrase as an emotional response in your heart. Pausing between each phrase to allow the mind to incline towards the experience of loving kindness. Without any demand, just planting seeds with each phrase and allowing the metta to grow in its own time. as you keep this person in mind.
allowing the sharing of metta to be natural, continuing to relax as you share this warmth, this well-wishing, this dear person in your life. And now if you wish, if you feel resourced and at ease, I'd like to invite you to bring to mind somebody who perhaps has certain qualities that are displeasing or irritating to you. And this doesn't need to be someone you have very serious issues with, certainly not somebody who's hurt you very deeply, but just somebody who has certain behaviors that you find somewhat difficult, maybe irritating, maybe they test your patience sometimes. Perhaps you think they could be more generous. You notice that stinginess from time to time, or their speech is sometimes harsh. Perhaps they get impatient. And bring them to mind, bring them into this beautiful golden sunshine that you're enjoying with your friend. Perhaps keeping them a little at a distance if that's more comfortable for you. And just see if you can include them in your field of loving kindness. Recognizing they too struggle as we all do in life. Just noticing your response if anything changes in that quality of loving kindness. 
and just keep on gently wishing them well. Perhaps imagining them relaxing, becoming more at ease. Showing a different side of themselves. And see if any phrases come to mind in relation to this person, if that helps. Just repeating the phrases calmly, clearly, consistently, as though you're offering this person a sincere gift. Allowing the mind, the heart to open up in the space between each phrase to take up this invitation. To incline towards loving kindness, even for this slightly difficult person. Recognizing they too desire happiness and recoil from pain. They too respond to love. And if you wish, if any 
difficult emotions have arisen for you, then just gently return to that friend, that loved person and spend a few more moments with them. Building up the metta with the easy object. Once again. And for the last five minutes of this meditation, gently returning to yourself. Recognizing that to other people, you also are this friend, this loved person. And perhaps to others, someone who is difficult to be with sometimes, perhaps even to yourself. Noticing that you too have some of those beautiful qualities that you see in your friend. And also, perhaps some of those same qualities that you find so difficult in another. Just notice what this reflection brings up for you. Perhaps more empathy, more compassion, humility. And gently wish yourself well. Embracing every part of yourself. Allowing yourself to be completely held in unconditional loving kindness.
the way you may feel when you are with a spiritual friend, someone who understands suffering and the cause of suffering and the universal wish to be free. Sabe sata Sabe pana Sabe buta Sabe pogala Sabe ata bawa pariapana Sabae tio Sabe povisa Sabe aria Sabe anavia Sabe Deva Sabe Manusa Sabe Uniparika Aweva Hontu Abhyapaja Hontu Ani ga hon tu Suki atanam pari haran tu Dukha munjan tu Yadalada sampadito Mawe gajan tu Kama Saka Sadhu 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 <laughs> Thank you for joining in with the Sadhus and if you wish to continue that's okay too if you wish to keep on meditating or just move into your day that's perfectly fine but now we still have 10 minutes to connect for anyone who wishes and kindness develops the less you need the words and or the words can just uh, change to something much more simple so you might go from several phrases to just one phrase or from the whole sentence to just the key word, you know, just as a reminder for the mind when it goes off track. So, yeah, different ways to practice. And for some people, the words don't work at all. For other people, you can stay with the words for a very long time, just as we stay with the breath for a very long time. And the metta is just growing in the background. Um, but I would say it's probably for most people, especially if you're developing in an intensive retreat setting, it's good to keep coming back to the phrases just to keep that momentum going. And uh, yeah, over time, the mind will naturally just, it will actually not be able to verbalize anymore. The metta will be so strong that it just takes over the mind. Yeah. So someone said it was nice to send metta to a friend who has COVID at the moment. 
Uh, someone else said that was so moving. Thank you so much. I was feeling very warm at the end and did not really want the meditation to stop. Oh, so you have to ignore me. If you don't want the meditation to stop, then the meditation, the teaching has done its job. And just carry on unless you have some, you know, inescapable appointment. Carry on. <laughs> when you started the meta chanting, it was so beautiful. Feeling nourished and deeply grateful. Sometimes it feels nice to just feel the feeling without the clutter of words. I wasn't sure if that was okay. That is wonderful, perfectly okay. Everything that's offered is just an invitation because there are so many people here with different um, inclinations in the practice. So for some people, the words might work. For others, you just feel the clutter. So you have to go with your heart, go with what's good for you at any given time, and that will change for you as well. Yeah, so it's all okay. Very timely as I've had the strong emotion of resentment, practicing with making plenty of space and kindness, very much a practice. Yeah, isn't it? And this whole path is always a process, a practice, something that's uh, uh, dynamic and alive, and not something that's uh, a formula that we stick with, but something that's a response. So yeah, it's great. And um, Metta is a wonderful way. We were talking about um, sense restraint and developing the senses yesterday in the Sutta discussion. Uh, we're into the sort of real nitty gritty meditation practice now in the suttas that are being chosen. And um, Metta is a way of guarding against resentment building over time because these things can creep into our minds in our daily lives without us even noticing if we're not careful. Um, you know, we just get a sense of um, tightness or contraction or, you know, it can manifest as like a flatness or even a sense of sadness, depression, dullness. And uh, when we look inside with metta, we realize sometimes that there is some resentment hiding there or some um, something that's not being felt. You know, bringing that kindness helps us to feel our emotional world in all its nuances and allow and allow, make space, yeah. We can even sort of energetically make space by broadening the field of our awareness from time to time. If we notice we are closing in on a difficult feeling in the body or a difficult emotion, you know, sometimes we, we do have, we always have this negativity bias that will hone in on what we think is wrong and we fail to see the bigger picture. We can kind of get too stuck on it and too much into a fixing mode. So we can actually widen up the, the um, sphere of our awareness by energetically shifting the awareness to the surface of the body, for example, or even to sense the space around us and just um, allow. Uh, so I sent Meta to my nephew and niece who I dedicated Wednesday's chanting. It was a powerful and inspiring meditation for me and it was surprising that these two were connected somehow. Ah, I'm not sure there if you mean that your niece and nephew were somehow connected or the chanting and the meditation was somehow connected. But uh, I'm guessing, yeah, please do write in the chat if you wish. The interesting thing about the Dharma is it's all connected. <laughs> it's all connected and yeah, beautiful to discover those uh, unknown connections as well. Just. Uh, Checking in, okay. I'll, I'll come. Oh, yeah, okay. You mean the chanting and the meditation were, uh, the two were fueled by each other. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Because when the chanting comes alive, it is actually a meta practice. You know, in a sense, you can say it's verbalizing meta. And these are the words of loving kindness that the Buddha himself used, or as close as we can get it, as close as we can know um, the way that the Buddha described the meta. So thanks for, for pointing that out. And I think, you know, it does. It certainly feeds one another. Um, beautiful that you notice the connection. Mm. So last comment. Thanks for this lovely session. It was very interesting to observe the results on an annoying friend. <laughs> as soon as I stopped being annoyed, it was much easier to send Meta to her. Yes, isn't it interesting? I like that you've put annoying friend in... in um, 
you, what do you call quotation marks because actually we can call the other person annoying what it really is is that we feel annoyance we feel annoyance how many times do we use language that says you annoyed me or you made me annoyed well no one held a gun to your head and said you must be annoyed you know what it really is is that annoyance is arising inside us perhaps we can say in relation to this person or in this person's presence or when we think of this person but it's probably our thinking and our relationship that's at fault there rather than the other person of course, some people have behaviors that are harmful to us and we have to, you know, maybe turn away or have distance. It doesn't mean we uh, accept everyone and everything into our lives. But we, once we start taking responsibility for our own emotions, we can stop sort of um, blaming them on another. Then it gives us more opportunity to uh, untangle that particular mental suffering that we have um through unskillful ways of reflecting and perceiving we have developed you know we have created for ourselves you know if it was really the case that we had to remove every annoying person from the face of the earth and nobody could be enlightened the buddha had people who were trying to you know even kill him and destroy the the sasana like his own cousin did that right through a piece of rock actually a boulder at the buddha which narrowly escaped him and and um, splintered his foot and he tried to um, you know, divide the Sangha in many ways, but the Buddha was still able to practice, still able to have compassion even towards him. So it's wonderful when we can start to turn inside, but also just to say that it's important to have spiritual friends, people around us that um, support us on the path and uh, that can make it easier for us, especially in the beginning stages of our practice. Great. And the last comment, so grateful for the Dhamma and you who radiate it, which is everybody here. <laughs> so thank you so much for your practice and for radiating metta to all of us. I can guarantee that it's not coming from me, it's coming from all of us, because when I um, practice this metta with you, I feel the, the power of the group. It's somewhat magical. It might be the four very special, beautiful individuals that we have right here with me, but I think it's also the people on the Zoom because it's a different energy. And I, I can, it's incredible to me that that can come through a computer. <laughs> or let's say the computer doesn't interfere. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, I have to bid you farewell. Our community here need to get ready for preparing our meal.